What is going on you guys? It is Avery LR32 here. It's been quite a while since I last made a video, but I wanted to talk about the Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Side of Dimensions movie. Uh, I went and saw it earlier today, and I gotta say, this movie was absolutely fantastic, and before I get into it, I also want to say too that if you guys do not want any spoilers, I highly suggest you click off this video now because I'm going to be getting into some huge spoilers um, talking about the animation and the storyline and all that. So if you guys don't mind hearing spoilers and just want to hear a full-fledged review of what I thought about the movie, then feel free to stick around. If not, that's fine too. But without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now, just to start off, as you can see from um, the promotional picture here, which is just what I'm going to be using for eye candy pretty much throughout this video, um, the animation even just on the poster is great. I mean, it's it's what you see in the film, and I have a picture uh, of the animation from the film that I'm going to show you in just a second here. But to kind of get the main storyline out of the way, um, as you know, or as most people know, I should say, is that this movie takes place right after where the manga ends. So if you read the manga, then you're going to know basically the storyline better than other people do. I never read the manga. And if you didn't read the manga, it's still okay because it, it still makes a lot of sense. Um, if you notice right here, there's a missing piece of the Millennium Puzzle that actually plays a big role in the film. Because, again, spoiler alert, uh, Kaiba here wants to face against the pharaoh again in order to basically uh, reclaim his title as the best Duel Monsters player. He doesn't want to play against Yugi. He doesn't really care about Yugi because technically Yugi wasn't the one that was beating him for all those years. It was the pharaoh. So he's able to find the Millennium Puzzle as most of you probably know at the end of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series when Yugi beat Atem. Atem uh, went back into the world beyond world. I guess basically he went to heaven I guess or died I don't know you went somewhere you went back to Egypt in his own time and the Millennium Puzzle was destroyed into all of its pieces again and Kaiba is able to find the Millennium Puzzle in all of the rubble and wants to rebuild it so that he can uh, fight against the Pharaoh again or duel against him whatever and this guy here his name is Diva basically his race has a power um, that whenever the pharaoh is gone, they have their powers, but when the pharaoh comes back to life, they lose their power. So he wants to make the world to a better place, kind of like what Darts did, or tried to do, rather. Um, if you guys watch the Ori Calco series of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Ori Season. And so, yeah, that's pretty much his whole plot. And he plays Cubix. Um, of course, he makes them seem really overpowered, which they aren't. Kaiba is, of course, playing the new Dragon Support, and Yugi's playing his typical Dark Magician, the deck thing. Um, so, Diva here gets a piece of the puzzle. Kaiba here has a piece of the puzzle. Diva's sister gives Yugi the piece of the puzzle that Diva got. And yeah, it's just kind of crazy. <laughs> so, he gets the piece. And then Yugi goes against Diva, beats him, and then he goes against Kaiba, um, and ends up in the middle of their duel. Diva comes back to life with the Millennium Ring, uh, like Bakura's Millennium Item, whatever. Uh, and then they do like a final duel to where they beat the guy, and then Yami Yugi comes back at the end with the puzzle completely remade, and they end up beating uh, Diva finally. Um, but just to kind of show off the animation, as you can kind of tell from this shot here, this is a shot of believe it's a chaos max dragon it's either no no, no it's a deep eyes white dragon um, so this is a shot here as you can tell the animation was perfect throughout the whole film definitely no complaints I would say that one of my biggest complaints about the film was more the duels in general because it was like you know we've seen this with Toei with like Dragon Ball Super where they do what most of the community will call ass pulls or just like out of nowhere they kinda just pull something out of thin air that kind of makes sense with the storyline, but sometimes doesn't, and they kind of did that in one duel when Kaiba's going against Diva. Kaiba just out of nowhere summons Obelis the Tormentor, even though the Egyptian gods disappeared with uh, the Pharaoh, but he's just somehow able to summon him out of nowhere. And speaking of summoning out of nowhere, <laughs> we need to talk about something that was actually in a trailer um, on Team Innovation YGO's YouTube channel, um, where Kaiba's going against Diva. And he's like, huh, that's weird. I don't have to make any sacrifices to summon my high-level monsters. And then Diva brings up, oh, well, you can Dimension Summon. And to explain what Dimension Summoning is in a nutshell, it's basically probably our new summoning mechanic. Some people are saying, no, it's not. It's just for the film. I doubt that. They wouldn't introduce something big like this. 
if it if they didn't want to at least potentially implement it into the game. And so, to basically to break down dimension summoning, it's a one card pendulum summon. Really, Diva kind of abuses it because he does it multiple times. But I doubt that in the real life game of Yu-Gi-Oh, Konami's gonna be like, "Yeah, you can dimension summon as many times as you want." No, that's probably not gonna happen. What dimension summoning is that? Let's say you have a blue eyes white dragon in your hand, and you like don't have monsters to tribute for it. Well, you can dimension summon it and use the power of your, as Diva calls it in air quotes, spirit to make the monster as powerful as you want but you can't make its attack points any higher than its original so blue eyes has 3,000 attack you can summon it and use the power of your in air quotes against spirit to give it its 3,000 points so you'll probably have to give up life points if Konami were to actually implement this into the game so you know you can dimension summon blue eyes not having to use a tribute comes out at level 8 but with zero attack and then you would pay life points to put it up to 3,000 so you might have to pay 3,000 to put it up to 3,000 per se is probably what I could see Konami doing but then if the monster is destroyed, instead of you taking battle damage, you basically take effect damage to your life points equal to that monster's attack. So if you pay 3,000 to drop a blue eyes, and then that blue eyes pops, you're going to take another 3,000, which is kind of like the way to deter you from dimension summoning. And um, also, side note, in this film, uh, all the duels were at 8,000 life points, which was you know interesting to see that they uh, made that change. Um, and if you watch the original Yu-Gi-Oh, you notice that the top of the cards were just like a clear uh, brown color. Well, the top of these cards in this movie look just like the ones in uh, Zexel and Arc V, the top of the uh, playing cards. Um, which, which was kind of a cool little thing to implement in there. I wish it would have been the original, but you know, that's something small. It's not that big of a deal. But the dimension summoning thing is really what freaked me out. Because literally, I'm sitting there on the edge of my seat flipping out, trying not to scream like a schoolgirl, because I'm like, oh my god, is this not our new mechanic that could possibly be coming with Yu-Gi-Oh! Series 6? Like, it's a big possibility. Like, you could quite easily, instead of pendulum summoning, you could just go, oh, well, I'm gonna, you know, pay 2,000 life points to dimension summon this level 6 monster and just, you know, have you deal with it. You know, the, the possibilities are endless. But what gets me, though, is that if Konami were to actually implement this dimension summoning mechanic, then doesn't that mean you could just pay 4,000 life points to dimension summon Oblis the Tormentor? And if the monster is a level 5 or higher monster and has either unknown attack and defense or zero attack and defense, what, you just don't have to pay any life points to summon a, a big monster? So, like, I can just summon Slifer the Sky Dragon for free? <laughs> like, and then he just gains attack points equal to the cards in my hand? So, it would definitely be interesting to see this implemented into our game. I would definitely love to see this in our game, I'm not going to lie. I think it would be very interesting, but I also think it would be very unhealthy for our game. Just because the the ability for you to be able to pendulum summon, and then on top of that, dimension summon. Like, you know, would dimension summon take away your normal summon? Would it, you know, count as a special summon? So, you know, just something to kind of keep in mind there. But like I said, animation was great. The story was great. I think the duels could have been a little bit better. I think they went by a little bit too quick, and were just kind of like, you know mostly things just pulled out of thin air like oh i'm gonna summon this and then i'm gonna dimension summon and then dimension summon this and if you watch the duel between kaiba and diva that's kind of what i'm talking about because it's like diva literally just kept on defusing his monsters refusing them together and then dimension summoning and then attacking and then just doing it over and over again so it was kind of meh in in that regard but i still think the duels were very amazing uh typical kaiba and yuki fashion the the duels were great um you know, between the two of them, um, the, the new dual disc, uh, that Kaiba's wearing here, um, it actually kind of plays a role, um, just because, you know, it's, it's new age technology, and, you know, you can see all the strategies of your opponent, and it's, it's kind of cool, the backstory that they gave with it, but anyways, that's about it for this video, you guys, if you enjoyed, let me know in the comments below, or leave a like or a favorite, thank you guys for watching, as always, and hope you guys enjoy the movie.